The question is, who is he? No stamps are fake. 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 Is he a security threat? I'm fake. Fascist. He's too fascist. Welcome to Australia. These people do very terrible, very no good. To me, he looks nervous. And tough questions for a drug suspect. Why did you change your flight? Yeah. Just staying here for two days doesn't make sense at all. For thousands of passengers, the warm welcome makes the long haul all worthwhile. But it's not for everybody. In a locked immigration office, Emmanuel is having an anxious wait. I've been in the plane for the past two days. I'm fucking tired. And now I have to wait here in the chair. This gentleman has arrived on an Italian passport. Speaking to him, our officer realised that he's not a native Italian speaker. The question is now, what is his nationality? I can't chill out until they tell me what, whatever is going to happen. I have a number of concerns about this passport. The first one is we have some stamps in his passport that indicate he entered and left Melbourne Airport in 1999. We have no record of that on our systems, which sets alarm bells ringing. And looking at these stamps, I'm not satisfied that they're genuine. I'm going to have to get an expert to have a look at this a little later to confirm my opinion. We've got some issues with this chap. If this passport isn't his, then the question is, who is he? Is he a security threat? Is he coming to work illegally? Or is he what we call a fugitive from justice? Has he committed a crime in another country? At the baggage claim, customs have put a man under surveillance. When he was at the queue, he was jumping the queues as well at immigration to try and get through as quick as he could. To me, he looks nervous. Ladies and gentlemen, for security reasons... Okay, Nelson, why did you change your flight? I got sick. Are you better now? You okay? Yeah, I'm good. So you got to you got to Johannesburg and then you booked a ticket to Australia. So originally you were just so I came from London and to gonna... Johannesburg. To Johannesburg. But today you're supposed to be back in London rather than being in Sydney. Right. If you suddenly want to come to Australia, there must be something you want to look at. Uh, the kangaroos. Um, watch that show, Steve, and seen a lot of this the show, the Steve, the, the crocodile Steve. guy. <laughs> Cro yeah, the crocodile guy. So I know I know quite a bit about, about Australia. You don't know many of the sites though. Can you tell me anything about Sydney that you know? About Sydney, they have the opera, the opera house. Opera house, yep. You said you're here for two weeks. What but you, but you, you booked to go out in what two days' time? Because that doesn't make sense. I'm not staying. No, it doesn't. Yeah. You're staying here for two days doesn't make right. sense at all. Back in immigration, Emmanuel wants to get on with his holiday. And he wants to speak in English. Notice his ID code. Issued yeah. in two different years, and it's the same photograph. Yeah. yeah. So this one was supposed to be issued in 2000, and this one was issued a year before in 99. Why would you still have the same passport photograph? Yeah. There. Is his contact book. Very few of the names appear to be Italian. Hello, my name's Peter Davis. You're Emmanuel? Nice to meet you, huh? This officer, his name is Deepak. He's a trainee down here at the airport. The first thing that we wanted to ask you about is you don't actually have a visa to Australia. Can you explain why you don't have a visa? Because we don't usually get a visa. Everybody needs a visa to come to Australia. I was here once before as well. I didn't need a visa. Well, that's something I wanted to talk to you about as well. Now, how did you find out about the Ashfield Motor Inn? It's just two friends that have been here before. OK. Is this your wallet? Yeah. I'm just going to run a little swab over it. This is to test to see whether you've been in contact with any narcotics. Okay. Have you been in contact with any narcotics? I don't know. Well, you either know Just or you don't. Just in case somebody was beside. No, no. I, no, I asked that. whether you had used it, not anyone oh, else. Oh, no, if I, no, no, I don't use this. Okay. The reason I'm asking you is just to simply find out whether you have. So if I do do this iron scan, it does come up with marijuana or cocaine or heroin or ecstasy or whatever. Right. I know whether you've lied to me or not. So, Mr. Quaddy, you just got on an aircraft without getting a visa for Australia. Is that right? Yeah. And where did you board the aircraft? Aircraft from yeah. Denmark. How long were you in Denmark for? Two days. Why? Just to look around. You said that you've been to Australia before. When did you come to Australia before? I was in 99. Why? To see the country. And how long were you here for? 20 days. 20 days. And what airport did you come in? Melbourne. Melbourne. And where did you go out? Where? Where? Melbourne. Melbourne. Well, the thing is, Mr. Quahi, we don't have any record of you arriving or departing on this passport. 
Nobody's ever used this passport to come to Australia before, and those stamps are fake. Fake? Fake. Can't be fake. They're the wrong shape for a start. It's not a forge. Yeah, I think it is. I think not. He doesn't have a clue about Sydney. He doesn't have a clue. Well, then we've got something, so... Check that out, mate. Thank you. These are called iron scan wands. They detect the presence of particles of narcotics or explosive devices. And they run through a little chamber here and they react according to the speed which they go through. How far is Asheville anyway? So I don't know why they'll give me that number. Well, it's not really near the city. It's not really near the beaches. It's not. It's not. <laughs> now that's just a positive for cocaine. That's off the gentleman's credit cards. This swab is from his luggage. It's been in contact with something. Fascist! Fascist! He's too fascist! Fascist! The unhappy travellers have flown in from New York. Australia, very good people. Listen to me, listen to what I'm saying, ma'am. No, stop talking and listen to what I'm saying. We asked you if you had food, you said no. When we found the food, you told us that you had food. I asked if you had any other food. You said you had carrots. No, if you no, no, listen to what I'm saying, ma'am. You told me you had the carrots. I asked you to find them. And as soon as you started looking for them, listen to what I'm saying, ma'am. Food from overseas carries with it the threat of pests and disease. When you went to find the carrots, I searched another bag. I found apples and I had asked you, did you have any other food other than the carrots? And you told me no. I'm telling you I did. No, listen, to, no, listen to me. At immigration in Sydney Airport, Emmanuel's passport says Italian, but is the document genuine? The bottom line is, if this passport is a forgery, and I think it is, okay, then I don't know who you are, and I don't know what nationality you are, but I believe my officer when he tells me that you can't speak Italian properly. I don't speak Italian, I told him, but I prefer to talk in English. Yes, but he said you speak Italian like a person who has learnt the language. No. No? Okay. Where were you born? Rome. In He's Rome. got some English. And what are your parents? Smattering or more mm -hmm. of Italian. Mummy. We think he could be Albanian. Who were you going to see here? Nobody. Nobody. What were you going to do here? Just look around. How long for? To, uh, not a month, because with the fort I start work, work again. In Albania, the TV does not have subtitles and major programs, or well, most of the programs are in English and Italian, so even people with little education have those languages. He really fits the profile for us, but we'll see what else he will tell us. Have you booked any tours? Do you know what you're going to see? Do you know what you're going to do here? Well, in a month time, obviously, I've got time enough to look around. Yeah, but you've got no plans. People don't generally get on a plane and come to another country for a holiday without any idea of what they're going to do. When you told me food, I thought what food which I ate in the plane. I didn't know uh, well, clearly seeds or, or prunes or uh, okay, apricots, which is uh, need, uh, need my husband for constipations. Okay. Clearly food that you've eaten on the plane is not of concern to us. Food that you bring into the country is of concern to us. So and now that, I know, now I know, now I know. I asked you if you had food in your other big bags and you told me you had clothes in them. We ran those bags through the x-ray and we found more items that are prohibited under the Australian Quarantine Act. You are going to be issued with a $220 fine. Why I must pay, pay my wife? How much money did you bring with you? I go 700 quid. 700? Euros. 700 euros won't get you very far. Of course not. No. Did you bring traveller's checks or anything like that? I, I left in a hurry so I forgot everything back. Why did you leave in such a hurry? It's just a holiday. I know it's holiday. So why did you leave in such a hurry? I just left. I'm going to get an expert to have a look at this passport. Okay. But there's some serious problems with it. And until those problems are resolved, you might find yourself in a situation where you won't be granted entry to Australia today. I won't? No. What about all the money which I spend on? At the customs barrier, Nelson's claim that he's drug free is looking shaky. The gentleman's got readings for cocaine on both. Um, 158, mm. 19, 8 segments, mm. 65, 17, and 3 segments. Okay. I might just get you to quickly x ray this. The readings came from his wallet and luggage. Some people can see 
narcotics inside the lining or inside the structure of bags. Uh, in this case, we'll be looking for cocaine. Uh, it'll show up as an organic substance on here. There's a pen, a few other items, glasses, case, whatnot. But apart from that, it appears to be clear. No coke in the bags, but his story just doesn't add up. Travel itinerary for William Kelly. Do you know him? No, I'm just wondering why that, that's my signature. Well, I'm wondering why because it's your signature as well. May, yeah, they, she may have made a mistake. In his documents, with his signature there, travel itinerary for William Kelly. Uh, it's for him to depart Joburg to go to Cape Town in a couple of days' time. Ring up, uh, ring up Intel and see if there's anything sort of on that name or whether he's travelled here before. You don't know that person? No. Travel itinerary for Mr. William Kelly. Nelson's second bag is about to be x-rayed. That clarifies the image a bit more, particularly the handles are a good place to conceal. At Sydney Airport. Kilo Barbin, Kilo Barbin. Echo Customs Barbin. officers have been searching Nelson for drugs. OK, thanks a lot. Bye. So far? It's fine, the handles are fine. Nothing. There you go, buddy. Is it almost done? What's that? Uh, not yet. You'll be the first to know when it is. He's had, he's had enough. He's not looking well, really. No, and I don't think the sitting down's got anything to do with the fact he's tired. Are you alright? Are you feeling ill at all? No, no, I'm fine. Just tired? Pardon me? Just tired. I'm fine. I'm just tired because it's been a long way, that's right. We took an iron scan before yeah. of your goods. Yeah. You saw me do that? Right. Mm -hmm. I came up for a reading of cocaine. Okay. Right, so I'm only going to ask you once, once only. Mm -hmm. When's the last time you used cocaine? I'm not asking if, I'm asking cocaine. when. I don't use cocaine. You've never used cocaine? No. I don't even smoke. I don't drink. You've never touched cocaine. Wouldn't know what it looks like. No. In Melbourne, the tourists from New York can't understand why they've been fined $220. Why I must pay, pay my way? From the other. The fine is because of a false declaration on your passenger card. You've ticked no to having food. It says food of any type. Um, and you've ticked no to having that when blatantly you've got, you know, three kilos of fresh foods right here in your cabin luggage. Tell, no? me, tell me how is mine here? The fine today? I mean, American dollars. American dollars? About half. But we'll have to exchange it. You take our money. We must eat. We must see. The lady has been issued with a $220 fine. She's required to pay that before she leaves the airport today. They took all my money. This $5, $5. I know. Are you taking $200? Yeah. You know First, she claimed that she could not read English, and when we questioned her further, she had filled the cards in, so she clearly understood English. She speaks very good English, so yes, yeah, she understands what's going on. I feel frustrated. It needs a silver. You understand? Clearly. The uh, passengers aren't happy about what's going on. Back in Sydney, Emmanuel's dodgy passport has landed him in trouble. Okay, how did you get that? How did you get the it? Passport. Tell me how, did, how you got it. With the passport? Yeah. At the same time? Yeah, at the same time. Right, they were issued in two different years. This passport photograph is the same as the one in there. Yeah, I know you got them at the same time because you paid for them. You didn't get them from the Italian authorities. I don't think you are Emmanuel Quatti. I think you are somebody else. Nope. I think you are not an Italian citizen. I think you're something else. Interview suspended at 7.05. I feel like he's lying to me. Um, I don't know his motives, I don't know his reason, but I don't think he's telling me the truth. That's what is real. Because of this false one, I wouldn't be here. He's still saying it's real, and he's saying you can believe what you he want. He has to, because I'm sure he's invested a lot of time and effort. It he... cost him money. Oh, yeah. yeah. It would have he, cost him heaps. Yeah, I asked him how much it cost, and he said he just got it through the normal processes. Yeah, the normal people smuggling processes. Yeah. But... The money that you've exchanged, you need to pay this lady. For me, it's simple. Vegetables and fruit, yes. Prunes and the apricot from constipation. My husband has a constipation. Pumpkin seeds from uh, uh, prostate. Uh, she still believes that she has done nothing wrong by bringing the items into Australia, despite the fact that she's failed to declare and has admitted that she was aware of the contents of her bags. 
these people do very terrible, very no good. While the protest continues, for me, no good. Linda's worst fear is realised. Fruit fly, there you go, fruit fly. We have a, a disease on, a pest on, on the actual fruit that's come in. So again, that, that's uh, an incredibly serious, serious matter. I do donation because Australia people very cheap. So the most dangerous thing that this fly could do would be to get out into the Australian fruit growing region and actually lay some kind of larvae. Potentially the cost is millions and millions of dollars. Dave, uh, we got a passenger downstairs. I'd like you to look at his passport if you don't mind. The guy is not being particularly cooperative and I don't think I'm going to get any information out of him so I'm relying on the document. Yeah, no problems, just leave right. with us and I'll uh, give you a call. Thanks mate, thanks. Okay. I got the plane from Denmark to here. Nobody told me anything. So when I get here, they say it's false. It's looking quite good, actually. I can't see any damage there at all. No, no evidence there has been substituted or used for the second time. If I get told by an expert document examiner that his document is genuine, then I'll go in there with an open mind. I think if he was a genuine visitor and I'd just had that conversation with him that I'd had, he'd be a little bit more outraged and a little bit more nervous than he is at the moment. They're miserable. They're like not human. In customs, Michael is still trying to figure out if Nelson's a drug courier or just a hapless traveller. The only one thing I don't understand is you said you've always wanted to come to Australia. Yeah, the only thing you can mention to me is one spot. I, I, know, I mean, it's, 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 I just find that unusual. I find that very unusual. I've worked I know, here for I nine know, years I and I find that unusual. I find your travel movements unusual. Right. I find the fact that you actually bought a ticket to go back to London today. You changed your ticket because you were sick. You're only going to spend four days in South Africa Tickets, rather than nine days. Tickets are usually cheaper when you buy them that way. So you're here for two why. weeks. You've got a ticket to leave Australia yes. in two days. That's why. I this is what I don't understand. And this is what I'm going to get you to tell me in the next couple of minutes, all right? I'm going to do another iron scan. Nelson keeps can, saying he doesn't do before. drugs. How old is your toothbrush? Pardon me? Your toothbrush. How old is your um, toothbrush? It's, I don't know, three months. Nice. Are you the only person who uses your toothbrush? Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to do a little swab on that. Just on that. Uh, I'm, going to run, I'm going to run the dog over him first. At immigration, the moment of truth has arrived for Peter and Emmanuel. Did they find anything out? Two Aussie stamps, the Melbourne ones. Uh, yeah, they're both counterfeit. The uh, pages are all counterfeit, the watermarks are counterfeit. Um, I've also checked around the photograph as well. There's no, no evidence there has been substituted or used for the second time. Okay, thank you. Yeah. The actual page and the whole passport is counterfeit. From cover right through to the back cover. Okay, interview resumed at 8.25. Okay, Emmanuel, I'll call you that for the sake of convenience, but we've just had uh, an expert in document examination look at your passport and they have confirmed what I believed, and that is that your passport is a forgery. A forgery, okay? What do you have to say about that? You're sure it's a forgery? Yes. I wouldn't tell you it was if it wasn't. Maybe. So many people who come to Australia with dodgy documents have basically purchased them, organised them, or been given them for work purposes. The Italian passport we are seizing because it is forged and it will not seizing. be seizing it and will, it will not be returned to you. We think he's Albanian. He won't be prosecuted and he won't be prosecuted because there really is no point to it. What we're after is a quick turnaround. This sends a really strong message to people traffickers, people who organise these sorts of documents. You can't even get past the border. No charges, but the man will be sent back to Europe. Just spoke to Singapore Airlines. Uh, they can get him out on the one o'clock flight. Could go all the way through to Copenhagen, but certainly Singapore at this stage. Fantastic. I don't think that I'll be coming here again. <laughs> For sure not. <laughs> Singapore Airlines was fined $5,000 for flying the passenger to Australia without a visa.
if he hasn't got anything strapped around that groin of his, oh, yes. I reckon it could be any. Grace the Labrador is a customs officer, trained to sit when she detects drugs. Nelson, that dog showed a positive reaction to you, sat down right next to you. Just going to ask you, are you carrying anything around your, your groin? Are you carrying anything on your body? In, am I carrying? No. No? Not carrying anything illegal around your body at all? No. Have you swallowed any drugs? No. Have you stuffed any drugs inside you? No. 